It's hard to believe, but the CVV Clips channel just hit 100,000 subscribers. And it's hard to believe because it's been growing at this crazy rate of like 30,000 subscribers a month. So if you're subscribed here on the main channel, it'd be amazing if you could also join us on the CVV Clips channel where we post the most funny and memorable clips from all the interviews like this one. Now I want you to be really, really honest with me. How many times have you been a little tight on cash and you've maybe only put $10 in your gas tank instead of filling it up? Or you got a wedding invitation and you're like, I wanna go, but I don't know how I'm gonna give them a gift. That's where Dave can help. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy that wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. So if you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it like a helping hand from future you. Download Dave today by going to dave.com slash CVV. That's dave.com slash CVV. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Future you will thank you. Oh yes, Ed is right there. This is a great way to start the interview. Oh, do you want to make a cameo? No? <laughs> this is Peter Avalon's rabbit. Yeah. His name's Ed? Ed Brown. Ed Brown. Ed, Ed Brown Bunny. <laughs> Named him after a mentor of mine. Ed Brown, Mr. Excitement. He used to wrestle uh, on the independents out here uh, in the 90s and then early 2000s, uh, and he helped train me. So shout out to Ed Brown. Beautiful person, beautiful man, and he kept me going when I got hurt. And you named a rabbit after him. I'm going to get him. Okay, get him. This will be perfect. We can't just talk about Ed Brown Bunny, EBB, and not he see him. His first media appearance. Oh, boy. He looks excited. His rate's going to go up. Look at, this. Look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Brown. Ed Brown. Hey, buddy. Hey, how old's Ed? He's going to be a year next month. Wow. Yeah. He's a Happy big... early birthday. Look at the oh. little... Oh, don't jump off of there, pal. Don't jump, buddy. Okay. You got so much to live for. <laughs> Happy early birthday, see ya. He does. He's a little like light brown behind the ears there. Oh, he's adorable. He's got he a, is he's, adorable. He looks like he's got a little uh, little baseball mullet. Kind of does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Thank you for inviting me into your home. Absolutely. Welcome to my humble abode here in Burbank, California. We live not far from each other. Not that far. Yeah. So I'm glad we could do this in person. Absolutely. Make what it is work. What is this behind... Before everybody starts asking, is this... Looks like you as a member of the Shield here. That was when I had my run in the Shield. I was the fourth <laughs> member that uh, they didn't quite make television. They decided that Moxley and them could be by themselves. Uh, actually, this is called Pact of Vengeance. It just came out. Uh, Len Kavazinski, he's a, he's a pro karate guy. He makes tons of films, uh, independent films. Uh, he's got it on, on his Patreon right now. Uh, this is Patreon. actually Patreon. Excuse me. Oh, I don't uh, have one of them. I'm whatever. Don't patronize I don't him. patronize my Patreon. Uh, Leo Fong, he is a legend in the, uh, in the, in the 70s and 80s uh, kung fu scene, uh, in the kung fu movie scene. Low Blow was his big movie. This is his actual his last movie that he did before he passed. And it features me and uh, Diamante. I didn't realize we'd be promoting this available on VHS, according to the poster <laughs> here. Wow. Right now it's available online, and it should be available in wider release pretty soon. So, so. anyone can go watch this right now? Yeah, just go, go find uh, Len Kabasinski on his Patreon. Uh, give him a follow, and it should be on there. So I'm excited. excited I, wa for I it. wonder awesome. how loud that uh, the AC clicking I on forgot is. that we That's have okay. uh, AC, so I could turn it off. I don't know. I, it's hot here. It's going to be. It's hot. We're in the valley. Yeah. It's going to be like 90, 100 today. Yeah. You know, people that are watching this in Arizona are going to be like, come on, that's, yeah. that's her in Nevada. <laughs> Shout out to Arizona, my, uh, my, uh, my second home at one point with championship wrestling from Arizona. So I'm very familiar with how awfully hot it, it got there. Real Oh, hot. Yeah. yeah. Minimum 120, it felt like all the time. How much acting are you doing? Uh, I'm trying to do more and more. I just got myself a little commercial agent, and I'm working on getting hey. some more agents. Uh, I just did this this film. I just did a music video with uh, Jacob Sartorius, who's a, a very talented young man, uh, and he's a, he's a I think he's over on TikTok. So he's got a 
millions of followers on there. He's great. Uh, so I'm just doing little things here and there while also staying busy with wrestling. I'm still appearing at AEW. Uh, I'm uh, uh, booking and writing and appearing on Championship Wrestling, uh, which we do every month at the Irvine Improv. So I, I, it's fun to say that I'm a Irvine Improv headliner. Um, and then I'm doing GCW with my man Ray Rosas, and we're doing Prestige Wrestling, and then we have Epic Pro Wrestling coming up. And we, we still have a lot of stuff, Lucha Vavoom. So I'm staying very active, very yeah, yeah. busy, and... I'm having a lot of a lot of fun. Well, I think people when they don't see you on AEW every week, they were just like, "Well, is he still there? Is he not? Oh, wait, he's on Dark now." All right. Uh, you could see me and Nemeth uh, and the rest of the Wingmen, Cesar and and JD were were usually main eventing Dark. Weird how that works out. That people are wondering where we're at. We're not on the flyers, uh, any of the advertising. Hell, it's hard. They don't even post any of our pictures on on Greenfly. But it's funny that we will main event most episodes. <laughs> of dark and we are i think now uh oh and 672 to the dark order and to really the best good. friends yeah really we're doing good. really well every month against both teams yeah when you put out that tweet basically saying i'm taking bookings now i think it made people ought to uh, scratch their heads a lot mm, and go it's weird that people in wrestling you know whatever <laughs> start to think and have to think of it's, ideas and well, the, it's, what, not, it's what, not the people what? in wrestling it's the fans who are seeing that and that's going, what i meant oh, wait a second yeah. what does this mean yeah yeah it means i'm still there and i'm just doing more things and uh there's more to life than you know dynamite and, and rampage because i'm dynamite since day one and then they're doing their their thing so i'm going to do my thing so. Well, there's a lot of people who are yeah, taking indie bookings. Absolutely. A, a ton. We absolutely. could list off 50 of them right now. Beautiful probably. Tony for letting us have the opportunity to do that and to expand our horizons while still being able to work at AEW. So yeah. it's, it's great. Shout out to Tony for that. Are you still pretty? Of course. Yeah. Look at me. I mean, look what you're wearing. Look at me. I'm relax. Well, you're in my house. I'm relaxing. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, I stay pretty. I stay professional. <laughs> I stay producer now at Championship Wrestling, and then it's a lot of peas. It's a lot of peas. I'm very, uh, a, 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 very good at alliteration. Yeah, pretty Peter. I, the whole week I was calling you pretty Peter Avalone. Mm. Like really putting a real spin on that. A little for e you. on the end. Little. Why not? Laxante mm. goo, perhaps. Ah, I wanted to do a take. I wanted to be Prince Peter Avalon at one point and write myself as like a a Spaniard prince and put a little italic over. One of them. It was an idea I had for Hollywood that I never ran with. I feel like you and Aaron Stevens, a.k.a. Damian Sandow, in Hollywood, championship wrestling from Hollywood, could be like something really good. Well, funny, funny you should say that. I, I, uh, he was writing the show before I took over. So that's fun. I just feel like, you know, yeah. maybe it's the robe. Maybe it's the alliteration. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We're don't... both handsome. Oh, so, so pretty. S stunning. I know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Where did the idea for the librarian gimmick come from? That's all Tony's idea. That's all Tony Khan's idea. Uh, I had Cody when he was there and was and AEW was still kind of just an idea that people were talking about. I had a DM from him after working with him at uh, at Championship Wrestling. Um, he DM me saying, "Hey, hold uh, May." whatever date and it was it was going to be it was it ended up being the first double or nothing so may 25th hold, i think may 25th yeah. yeah so i said hold that date and i said okay and then uh at a bar wrestling show at the uh at the bootleg we're downstairs and i believe it was the, the bucks came i think chris daniels maybe scorpio sky was booked and they just started kind of telling me this idea about the librarian and it was tony's idea and after then explaining it to me and they said after Tony explained to us idea, the idea, uh, we thought the only person that could get this over and play this well is, is Peter Avalon. And I said, oh, well, thank you. So they explained the idea, they explained this, and then we filmed a bit for BTE, and then it was just kind of off, off to the races. Uh, they would still kind of decide what the character was, like, was going to be as, as time went on. Um, so the, the, the idea that Tony wanted, he's just, he wanted a... a a librarian. It's a character that got heat by saying, you know, shush to everybody. I work at the library. And that was pretty much the gist of the idea. Uh, the Bucks wanted to do the take on it where it's, I'm Peter Avalon and I'm going to take this this dumb part because I want my foot in the company by any means necessary. Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of acknowledging that, oh, this gimmick's dumb and I will, I'm going to do it because I want the job. 
Uh, and then we kind of played it like that on BTE. Uh, and then I think it just ultimately, I just kind of just started, bec- I just became a librarian and started just believing it. And then um, the team with Brandon happened and then the split happened. Uh, but Leva was also a librarian the, as well. That was also just kind of done on on the fly so i was under the idea that i was going to be the the only i was the librarian i had i was under the understanding that i was the librarian or librarian and bte uh we were talking about that i'm the librarian and then this thing came out where uh uh they're going to do a contest where people could send in promos to become the librarian they kind of told me that it was going to happen and then they had an idea for it where there's two librarians now and i'm like hey whatever i'm down for whatever yeah. i'm i'm up i'm open I'm professional Peter, and I can make anything Another work. Another alliteration Absolutely. There. I can professional make, Peter. I can make anything work, anything, any, especially anything silly. Uh, so, whatever. And then uh, these promos happen. Leva's naturally gains traction. It just does. She does she, she's, she's just good at what she does. She's yeah. a natural entertainer, and she's, and, and she's good. Uh, so now we're, we're, she wins the contest, and we're partnered together. Uh, and then here we are today it was kind of just kind of written as we went on uh, and it was a lot of my own brainchild trying to think of what to say uh tony wanted to be very lanny poffo but i didn't want to be just a direct lanny poffo so i was like maybe i don't do poetry let me maybe i'll be let, let me let me dive in and see what a librarian actually does mm. it's like i know he's not just a dude who reads books <laughs> a librarian is a read book so yeah. librarian is the not he's uh, google before google you know what i mean you go and talk to him so it's like you can find out information or he can point you in the right direction to find information so it's like that's what i'll try to do i'll just i'll spit facts so i would look like i would just, maybe i find some sports facts and i'll just start reciting facts so that became kind of my my th- my thing for a little bit as I come out and I kind of I try to take little jabs at the sports teams and uh, uh, I had Jen Sturger there at the time she was my 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 clue into anything that was sports related so and she knew her she knew her stuff man so I would go over to like okay where are we at okay what team what happened and she was no like she was hammering off like like current current stuff like this guy's this and he's injured this and this I was like oh shit I don't know any of this stuff <laughs> I'm just I don't yeah. I don't give a shit I'm not an NFL NBA guy I. Uh, so she helped me big time with any of those promos. Um, the crowd loved saying shh. They did. Like I, that, that was so over. I still get shushed. And I, I, my, my match with Sonny Kiss at uh, Fight for the Fallen was the first time I got to actually wrestle as the librarian. Mm-hmm. I just remember this... Again, everything was kind of just done on the fly. Nothing has been hammered out. There's not much. So we're, I'm getting my reps on air as the librarian on what this character is. I have nothing really. So this is before I kind of started doing just the shush stick where I walk down to the ring just shushing, just shushing. So now, so I have no idea what I'm going to do as the librarian, transitioning from being professional Peter at the Hollywood show and then being producer Peter at my Arizona show. Like, those are two separate characters. And then I was still doing the stripping P.P. Ray act, which is completely third separate character. So now I have a fourth character yeah. that I have to develop that I don't know what the hell it is. So I come out to just silence. I have the mic. Because they expected, they wanted me to eventually say a little something to get to Sonny's, Sonny's entrance. And I think I hit him. I'm getting booed the entire way down. And I was like, hell yeah. All right. That's awesome. This feels good. Hell yeah. They were <laughs> booing the hell out of me. I didn't have music. They just had the Titantron that just said, shh, quiet in the library. Me and Leva come out. I think I pause at the top of the ramp and continue down. Boos. Heavy boos. I was like, yes, great. This is wonderful. It's working. Uh, I think I get into the ring and I start the hard cam and give him one long shh. And it's just boo, yeah, yeah. and they're booing the hell out of me. And I'm like, this is great. This feels so good. Yeah. And me and, uh, me and Sonny have a nice little five-minute match. Good little pre, I think it was a good little pre-match. Yeah. You know what I mean? Didn't overstay our welcome. Sonny comes out with a nice little song and dance number. Fun little match. Sonny wins. We go home. Uh, they go home happy, go into the pay-per-view happy and excited and, and awake now, like is the point of a of the pre-match, yeah. you know? Uh, and then when I got to the back, Tony was ecstatic. He was so stoked. He was, he was, if he's behind the table here, I'm coming in. He's like, oh, Peter, Peter, that was, that was great. Peter Avalon Championship Wrestling from Theft in Hollywood. My man, that was wonderful. Hell yeah. Great job, great job. And he's, he's telling me how great I did and, and, I, and then putting over Championship Wrestling, which is, which is awesome. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> you know, so he was so stoked that it went so well. Uh, and I was stoked that it went so well. And it, it just had a natural 
people just had a natural inclination to want to boo this. Don't tell me to be quiet. And they did, and they did. Yeah. It was great. How many texts did you get when WWE got a, a character that was shushing people? Uh, I, I, yeah. Quite a few, quite yeah. a few. I would get tagged on uh, on social media. I'm like, what is it? I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. shush. Well, good for you. Yeah, you Chad. Like, <laughs> you were shushing people first. That's right. I'm the shush man. As you know, wrestling fans just like to be in on it, I feel like. So if it's like sh like when the sh came up I was there actually at awesome. for the Fallen. When that came up in the Titan Tron or the whatever we call it, the Tron, jeez. Everyone was like, Well, I'm in. Like I I'm I'm in on this with you now. Yeah. Yeah. It felt it felt good. So for them to really react the right way, I was like, Hell yeah, let's see let's see what we can do. You know, even if it's just like a once in a while thing, I come in, I say, Shh, quiet down, I get my ass whooped in a couple minutes. Like, I think we did that a couple times. Uh, once with Luchasaurus and once with Moxley. Um, and then, yeah. I feel like in the early days of AEW, everyone that got signed as an AEW original had an in. Somebody, they knew somebody that got them in. Was it Cody for you? It was, it was a bunch of people. Uh, I am a one of a kind character. In, in professional wrestling. And I can play one of a kind characters. There's like, it's great that people practice this character for so long, but I can be a good character with just nothing given to me. You know, like the librarian, there was nothing given to me and, yeah. I, and I made it something completely unique. So I'm a one of a kind character. Uh, I forgot what you were, what was that? <laughs> I, I was so just, who was the in? Oh, it was, it was a bunch of different people. It was Cody, it was, it was the Bucks, it was a lot, it was most of the EVPs, sans Kenny. He's the only one I, I hadn't met at well, that Well, I guess you were working time. with the Bucks quite a bit in California. No, no. you would think, but yeah. I, I, I met the Bucks in my original training in 2007. I trained at this school in Anaheim, uh, Stanton, right next door, uh, at this, at this jiu-jitsu center. Um, Charles Mercury was the trainer. He's an old PWG guy, SoCal guy. Um, Scorpio Sky was one of the was one of my trainers. He would come through, uh, and since they were pals with all the guys in the area, the Bucks were still coming up at the time. So they came through to roll around in the ring. Uh, Scott Lost was there. Uh, we had Chris Hero, Candice LeRae, a lot of people that would come through. And then that's how I met the Bucks. They came through training uh, mm. once or twice, and I would roll around with them. And they're like, hey, you know, this kid's talented, and he, you know, he wants it. And uh, I, was, I got to meet them the first time and saw them wrestle at um, AWS nearby and EWF nearby when they were s slick Nick Jackson and Mr. Instant Replay Matt Jackson. <laughs> Freshly called the you know, Young Bucks not too long ago. Uh, you know, I think even before they were, this is before they had started working PWG too. Uh, I was there at the first PWG match and I was excited for them because of the training that I had with them. I was like, oh, hell yeah. My pals are debuting at Gorilla. Uh, and they, I think they wrestled Scott Lost and it was either Scott Lost and Joey Ryan or Scott Lost and Chris Bosch. They, they had a whole group called the Dynasty, and it was the combination of them. I want to say it was Chris Bosch and Scott Lost. I'm not 100% sure. Russell, the Young Bucks, in their debut, and it was a wonderful match. It was great, and it was just early on showcasing what they can do. Uh, but it was all it – was, it was those guys, and uh, it, I'm glad that they thought of me, but – I guess it's one thing to say like, yeah, my pals got me in, but they all in unison clicked when an, an idea was given to them of this character. They said, oh, Peter Avalon, mm -hmm. immediately Peter Avalon. So it's like, yeah, I had that way in, but all their brains went one direction when they were told something. What know? is the way that you approach a character? Because I think there's a lot of people in pro wrestling that have this idea in their mind when they go into train, you know, I am going to be this. And then they point everything in that direction and... You know as well as everybody that doesn't always work that way. And most of the time doesn't work that way. What's your approach to a character? Just kind of see what flows and just kind of, you know, throw stuff against the wall and don't be afraid to look stupid. I ultimately <laughs> think that's what kind of stops a lot of people is they're kind of ultimately afraid to look stupid. But it's like you're in wrestling, bro. It's completely stupid. The I guess, whole thing. I think the it's the bottom. idea of looking stupid in front of a crowd. Yeah, I get that, but then it's like you have to. I feel you have to go into that with the same mentality that like a comedian would. You know yeah. what I mean? When they do like an open mic, like yeah. Gil Gilbert Godfrey, rest in peace, is a legend. But he would go up on stage and didn't give a shit what he would say, and sometimes he'd get heat for it. Yeah. I'm not saying go up there and try to get heat. You know what I mean? Like go up there, middle fingers, racism and sexism and anything that you're. It's like whoa, no. But like. 
you know. But don't be afraid to take chances. Yeah, don't yeah. be afraid to slip on your ass and banana peel, slip on a banana peel pie in your face. Like, yeah. I remember going into, into wrestling school thinking that too. I was like, okay, I have an idea. I want to I want to be like, I, I think I need to be tough. So it's yeah. like, of course, I'm trying to be tough. Uh, at the time I'm watching, the, the new wrestling I'm watching at the time past beyond WWF E at the time was uh, like, I had discovered me low key, Davey Richards and all these guys. And it's like, okay, they're, they're tough. They're kind of this. So it's yeah. like, maybe let me try to act like that. Yeah. And then I'm not doing that. In, like as much as I'm trying to do that in training, what naturally will come out is not that, you know what I mean? I'll be in spots trying to act like that. Ugh. And then I make a mistake and then I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my natural stuff is coming out with people. We're having fun. We're doing this. And then it's like, Oh, let me just try something else and be a little more natural. And then when I could be more natural and then slip on a banana peel and do this, and then it's easier for me to kind of play tough. Yeah. You know, like, I yeah. don't know. It's also getting life experience in every other stuff too. Well, I think it's also like there's wrestlers that have been doing it for three years and they feel like they are a veteran now. And you can now, I get so distracted with a bunny hopping around over around here. This is great. You know, you've been doing this for so long now that you're like, Oh, no, that's not how it works. You need a whole bunch of reps to really be able to say, I know what's going on in the room. Yeah, there's a, there, there, it's a whole different world, especially when you're not when you're trying to play something that you think is not you or not yourself, but it's like, oh, no, that is, it's you, it's yourself. You <laughs> that's got to be difficult, though, when it's a promoter or maybe it's a, a trainer going, this is what I see for your character. And you're like, but I don't. I don't look in the mirror and see that when, when I look and see myself. Right. There was a lot of that. There was some of that early on. Uh, Marquez had an idea for me, and I had a um, I haven't I hadn't flushed out my Pretty Peter idea yet, and I kind of told him like, "Well," uh, and then he was like, "Oh, of course, every other, like every other one else." And blah 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 blah. And That's I, a it, good Dave Marquez. It was yeah. a very good Dave. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then like, I maybe I didn't take the exact thing he told me to do, where it was like this weird. Not this weird. It was looking back uh, in hindsight. I, I I think I could have played the gimmick very well, just not at that point in my life. Mm. Uh, but it was like a, like a pompous popper type, you know. Uh, and I just remember thinking, I was like, I was like, that's yeah, not me. Uh, but then now I've taken a lot of stuff that Marquez has said and done tweaks. I've taken a lot of stuff that other people have said and done this and done this that have said. They tried to say in something, but you just kind of take little things and make it yourself. But it's also being open and receptive to that feedback too, and also. Mm. Because some of the time, sometimes people are giving you feedback that comes wrapped harsh. And then it's like, fuck you, excuse yeah. my French. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. But then you look back, you're like, mm. Yeah. You're like, if you had said that a little bit differently. Yeah. yeah. So I put that in a compliment sandwich. That know? is one thing I've learned with a lot of people in wrestling is they don't have tact. Yeah. No tact. And I think that might be because uh, of it being wrestling. They feel everything has to be. Let me tell you something, brother. And it's like, how about some fucking tact? Yeah. <laughs> I, that, I, yeah, if, if you could build the uh, constructive criticism sandwich of like, you did this well, the bun. You could work on this, the meat. Yeah. But if you... That, that's a beautiful thing. way to, 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 help, to help people that don't know what tact is. To like, yeah. here's a, how to do some tact. Whereas like, I've been right away... Here's you've done this and this and this wrong, and then it's just how you say it to yeah, people. That's, you know, it's mm -hmm. be endearing. Don't be a a prick. You know? And I feel like that's what happens a lot of times backstage when people will talk about the locker room at this company is not as good as the locker room at this company. Yeah. It's because you know it all trickles down from the top. And I'm not talking about any company in particular, in particular here. No. But sometimes it's like if the person at the top who's making the decisions doesn't have a good way of delivering this, well, now you just feel like crap. Yeah. Yeah, it really there really is a talent in being a um, damn. I forgot the word like a not like a delegate, but like a, a diplomat. Oh being yeah, a very diplomatic. Yeah, you know, sure. How to, how to sit someone down and say like, this is how with this and this and this because there's leaders that can there's leaders that can lead, but they're not diplomats, and then yeah. vice versa. You yeah. know, having that kind candor, candor, yeah. and being able to say like, hey, you could work on this, but also you did this thing. Really yeah, well. exactly. Yeah, exactly. How do you feel that mustaches are cool now? Because oh, look at this, we got a little. He's back. Hey, buddy. Because like I feel like, with great respect to you, you had a mustache, ironically, for many years as part of the character. Now they're like cool to have a mustache. A lot of the stuff I ended up doing is very was always kind of done ironically, and then it just kind of turned to like, oh, it's not bad. I actually like this. Like I kind of. Thanks for making sure he's not chewing. The I cables. just want to make sure that he's not chewing your cables. He's a little 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 punk. He's okay. Hey, I see you. He's okay. Uh, 
What was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. I mean, it's a great looking mustache. Oh, thank you. Uh, Like the same thing with like when I initially had the long hair, I did have the mustache as a rib. I, I, I had this awful beard (laughs) and I was like, I'm going to get rid of this beard. I shaved it and then I just had the mustache and I showed, uh, I think I showed Marquez because, uh, Hollywood Towers for a few years was Marquez had a at the front house and then there was a back house on the same lot uh, and I lived back there the director of the show lived back there and then some other wrestlers lived back there and the third roommate would always circulate well, regardless at this current situation I had shaved and I went over and was like what do you think huh? what do you think <laughs> what a very very poncho right he says he's like he's like keep it and I was like oh. no he's like keep it all right. It was a new year. It was New Year's. And it was a New Year's party. I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean it up a little bit. And I'll go to this party. And, yeah. And just mess with people. And then everyone was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I was like, oh, this is hilarious. And I was like, I think I'm going to keep it. All these, all these fucking people are reacting so funny. And it's, just, it's people I know. It's my pals, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're giving me such odd looks. And I was like, I'll keep it. So I just kind of tried to clean it up and make it as nice as possible. And then I was like, oh, I like it. I kind of like it. <laughs> now it's part of who you are. It's a part like. of who I am. I've had it for so long. I've cleaned it up even more to the point now that I do like it. Uh, so I, I tried. I had the man bun for the same thing. I was like, yeah, I kind of like it. And then ultimately, I was like, oh, I don't like it anymore. So now I got this thing. At first, I was trying to have bangs to go this back. Thing. This thing. You don't thing. even have a name for it. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try to go something silly. And then I was like, I was like, oh, I like it. So it kind of ends up just ribbing. I kind of rib myself into liking it. And then it just kind of works out that it ends up being, I guess, hip at the time. The mustache it was just a rib, but it was in. They, and now they it's are even in. more in. I grew a mustache in 2008 for Movember. All right. You know, the charity that raises, yes. uh, you know, awareness and funds for men's, uh, men's health. And I grew this in 2008 and it looked awful. <laughs> and I got made fun of mercilessly. Did it again in 2009, the same thing. Now, here we are 14 years later and it's cool. It's cool, the yeah. The exact same ugly mustache. Damn. Some, yeah. There's some good mustaches out there. Dax has a real good mustache. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tyler Bateman has a wonderful mustache with a mm-hmm. little, nice little twirl there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's some good mustaches out there. Uh, Royce Isaacs has a real nice mustache. Cool. Great mustache. Yeah. You feel like you could be related to Rick Rude with oh, the hair the, and, and the, the physique. mustache. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Same physique, too. Uh, same, yeah. spot on. Yeah. I know. Everyone tries to be like, he's like a smaller version of, it's like, no, the cameras have just gotten better. That's right. Yeah, come on. It, it adds how many pounds? Uh, Ten. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's all you need because I'm huge. Yeah, <laughs> we have a, a backdrop here. Is this for auditions? Yeah, I like to do. I'll do the. Uh, you do green screen auditions? The self, just self tapes. Yeah, yeah. Like self tapes, but I'll just put it on a green screen. It's easier really? just to have. I feel like of, this wall would be. Eh, I think it's a little better looking than the uh, the white wall. And I think it'd be funny too that they could also maybe add a add something to it. Maybe a giant cat behind. I feel like when when a casting director watches an audition tape, they decide in the first four seconds, right or not. Probably, yeah, like probably probably decide from your slate. Probably from the green screen. They're like, this guy's a rookie amateur, or this guy knows what he's yeah. doing. <laughs> wow, is that a green screen? Yeah. Wow. I yeah I uh, I think I've done. I got it for like to do like TikTok and Instagram stuff, and then uh, just to kind of play around and make my own things. Like I went to Goodwill and I bought a. I bought this plaid jack and I was cutting like uh, car and car salesman type promos and stuff. So it was just kind of play around and you know what I mean? Why not? Well, I feel like if you live in LA, you, you have, have to. Yes. Yeah. Everybody has dabbled at least a little in bit. In something, in something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we we all have those friends that are auditioning every day. Oh, yeah. There's, I had, yeah Ryan Nemeth is real good at all that. He's a Hollywood hunk and he's, he's yeah. Oh, he's grinding. He's and, grinding. And that's the thing is, I think a lot of people move to LA with the hopes and dreams and aspirations to be an actor yeah and you realize that your job is really just to do a lot of auditions a lot of auditions and and it's not one of those things that it's just like there's a person there's the face in the crowd that is so make-believe you know I I knew someone out here that they would just go to Hollywood and walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard because they thought that that's how you just get discovered all right and then it took I think it was a casting director that was like no, no, that's, you just got to make the auditions and put them out there Yeah, and then just kind of try to figure it out from there. Pretty much. It's a lot of figuring it out. But you li- you've lived out here your whole life. I am born and raised. Despite. Uh, no, I am born in uh, Carson City, <laughs> Nevada. Born there. I'm from Carson City, Nevada. Uh, you, you ever been there? Never been to Carson City, <laughs> Nevada a day in my life. Uh, I like to keep it. Marquez taught me 
a lot, most of what I know about television, wrestling, and just television in general, a lot of stuff. And I remember we had this school, this academy in, in uh, Anaheim called Mach 1. And Mach 1 was, a, was an organization ran by a beautiful man named John Ian, rest in peace. And, and uh, they helped a lot of the guys at the time to develop quicker because they ran... Uh, weekly Friday shows, but they ran it like television. So it's like we would tape it. The footage would never see the light of day, but we taped it because mm. Marquez is in the back watching on a monitor with John Ian, and, and we had guys like Adam Pierce around and and, and other Pierce, and other people that were talking about it and we were able to talk about the footage and and we had headset mic uh, refs mic'd up with the, the headset and everything. So we're keeping times and and running it like a real TV show. Mm. Uh, but it's a rinky dink little room that like had these little little like short. Uh, uh, bleacher seats around, so it's like you get one or two, three rows of people max. And uh, but then you're getting NWA title matches from Adam Pierce, and then you're seeing the early guys like uh, Kevin Martinson and and Yuma and Watts and myself and all and Scorpio Sky, and you're seeing all these guys that are like their earlier develop some early development wrestling here, learning how to develop TV. And they just, they, they helped us grow as performers so much because they would keep our time. They was like, you know, we have two minutes remaining through, and help us keep time. And, and it was just for practice? Just for practice. Mach, wow. Mach 1 would had their own students and, and the, the, the academy was ran by, at the time, Joey Ryan and Kevin Martinson. So they trained, uh, they had a few people that came out of their... Um, Nobody that's around anymore. The, the star at the, the school was Nick Madrid and he had since uh, retired. Uh, by. So you're saying you were very, you kept very much to kayfabe because of that. Because Carson of this, yeah. So, be, yeah, so uh, because of that, uh, everybody was billed from Los Angeles. And Marquez was like, <laughs> we how are we going to be, you know, an international show, but everyone's from Los Angeles. So it's like we started just th making everybody from different places. So uh, early Ray Rosas, they made him, I think, from Phoenix, Arizona. And they made... Uh, uh, or Albuquerque, New Mexico, something like that. And then they're like, uh, they moved me from wherever I was from. And Dave, I think, was watching Bonanza that day. And he's like, Carson City, Nevada. So I have been from Carson City, Nevada since 2000. And, uh, you should probably pay, pay a visit there. I have had an idea to go there and make like a mockumentary of like, oh, here's, you know, my hometown. <laughs> You're so <laughs> so it's still in the it's still in my pocket to do. But you were like born and raised in California. There's so few people. I live in Burbank now. I was born in Burbank, the uh, hospital over here. I grew up in Rancho Cucamonga, same same town as the Young Bucks and, and Brandon Cutler. Never never met them over there. They went to rival high school, Alta Loma High School. I went to Los Osos High School. Our wrestling teams were rivals. Were you on the wrestling team? I was on the wrestling team for two years. My freshman year and my sophomore year, I broke my arm in my I fractured my arm in sophomore year and my grades were dropping so my mom and dad were like mm, son mm. did you fracture your arm wrestling uh, it was a my own team fractured my arm bro we were playing a game I think called like shark or piranha or something and uh, he like pulled me and I just took a weird impact on it and I had this fracture for a little bit and then my <sighs> like my grades were dropping so when I I had to I had to make the I had to quit I had to quit <laughs> so I feel like with the California wrestling scene, like there's a lot of people. Like we there's could tons, bro. Tons. And there's even post pandemic, there's tons that I have no idea who any of them are. But they're like just the Los Angeles region is like you and the Young Bucks and Luchasaurus, Jungle and Boy, Jung Scorpio Sky, right? John yeah. John Morrison lives here now. Taya lives here. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many. Eli Drake was here for a long Our time. Our scene has always kind of been low key, like huge like John Cena was trained out here Samoa Joe people and all. don't talk about no, that that's like, where he was discovered yeah it's UPW Sting, right? Venice Beach and like like they were all here at the, the Venice Beach UPW a lot of them like John Cena and uh, Frankie Kazarian they were all yeah, there like yeah. you know they've done a lot like California has, Daniels, has yeah. had a history of developing stars and having stars come through and be here they all go other places and uh you ever thought about living somewhere else? Well, no. <laughs> I, I love being able to go other places. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but the best part about some of that is getting the hell out of there and coming back. I love it. I love coming back. Yeah. Like, everyone's like, LAX sucks. Yeah, but everywhere else does. L LAX is pretty bad. It's not, uh, have you been to Orlando? Orlando. It, Orlando. That is my least favorite airport is Orlando. It goes, it goes Orlando and Dallas. I think I don't like, and I'm so sorry, everyone. I don't like Atlanta. 
Hot Atlanta. Yeah, that, I mean the airport. Atlanta's a yeah, great city. Yeah, Atlanta, the town is wonderful. Atlanta's great. The airport, though. I'm I, not there enough, so I'm not. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that one, and I've connected in Dallas a lot. Dallas, I connect a lot, and I, I despise it. And I, I fly American, it. so it's like you'll land in A, and then you gotta like fly out of Terminal D for your connection, yeah. which is like six stops on the train. <laughs> I got stranded there. And they lost my bag, and because of that, I missed out on having a match with one-on-one -on -one match with Billy Gunn. What? So Dallas, I have heat oh. with Dallas. Have you ever made up for that match? No, I've been in a bunch of tags uh, where he was in it, but I'd never, I never got to do the one-on-one, -on -one, and I don't know if it'll happen now. It needs to. happen I would now. love it. I was ready. I was ready. I'm the one that dubbed them ass boy. Dan Housen is not going to be happy about that. Say it's all right. I Wait, mean, what do you mean? There's a promo. You said this before Danhausen? Yeah, like uh, way, way before. Uh, uh, it was uh, me and Sean Spears wrestling against Austin and, and Billy. Colton wasn't there yet. And uh, being the librarian, I got to talk on the mic, and I forgot what I said exactly. But I was like, Billy, Billy Gunn and son, what does that make you? The ass boy? And then we got like, there was ass boy chants going on and everything. So it was cool. It was fun. Is there footage of this somewhere? I, I've posted to, it. It's on dark. It was on dark. To, and then I posted it on my up. Twitter. It's on there. It's on my Twitter. I'll find Everybody it. Everybody in the comments is going to be finding this. Yeah, now. they got to find it. Wow. This is, this is like breaking news, I feel like. It's all right. Because they're so over now as the ass boys. They are the ass boys. It's all right. My it, check will come. It should. They're embracing <laughs> it, but they, they do not like it. I, I called. I had them in the studio recently, and they're like, don't say that terrible it's all right the heat should be on you though yeah it should be i started it. i'm sorry who's someone other than billy gunn that you want to work with and haven't had the chance to work with yet oh there's tons of people there i would love to have a match with christian cage mm. ethan page i would like another <laughs> one was i wanted to wrestle scorpius brian, brian cage uh, brian no. diamond dallas page gdp would be great brian's a little too big and scary uh, <laughs> oh there's another uh, la guy yeah, yeah. That, oh he's uh yeah but now he he's in vegas now he's yeah yeah uh, I wanted to wrestle Scorpio Sky when he was the uh, the TV champ, of course. Who didn't want to, you know? Um, so, but I feel like that's just a small list. There's a lot of like, there's tons super of people talented there. people. Tons there. of people there. Yeah. yeah. What's the one match that you go back to? And it might not be AEW. It could be anywhere that you go back to, and you're so proud of that. Probably a lot of the work that I did on my championship wrestling from Arizona show. I'm very proud of my title match with Nick Aldis. I'm very proud of the matches I had with uh, Tim Storm, the two that we had leading up to our third at NWA 70, which I'm proud of as well, because I think we stole the show on a show that we weren't supposed to, and we were the match that had to suffer the, uh, the issue with the bad timekeeping of the rest of the show. We kind of got rushed, but we mm. had a wonderful segment and, and it stole the show, mm. beautiful match. Mm. Um, so probably a lot of that work that has stemmed from championship wrestling from Arizona, even stuff that's not my own wrestling, just stuff that we produced because we, we really made an impact in Arizona and took a show that legit, we got worked by some promoter on the ground. It took th stole thousands of dollars from us, uh, l never booked the star of the show that we were promoting. No way. Uh, yeah. At the time it was Alberto Del Rio before yeah. everything. And, um, uh, and then he was never booked. Uh, the guy, the guy took the money and ran his own show somewhere else, and we just didn't have a way to make any of this happen. We drew eight people that day to crown our first champion, and then we turned the show into a sellout show at the Nile Theater month after month after month after month after month. Wow. We're going from eight people to almost to the promoters not wanting to work with us to almost the show shutting down to selling out the Nile Theater every month. So I'm very proud of the stuff we did at, at, at uh, Championship Wrestling wow. in Arizona. Very proud. Do you look back at your time in TNA fondly? No. <laughs> I, I loved working with uh, Ethan, Ethan Carter. EC3 is, a, is, a, is, is great. He's a great guy. Um, and he was very helpful uh, with me because like, he knew what the role was. He knew that it's just I'm just going to get my ass whooped. But he wanted to make sure that I came out of it as well good you know well that it's like he know like he knows i'm not supposed to come out of it well this is all for him but he wanted to get as much as as much mileage as i could get out of it hmm. and i think because of that and everything we were able to do with that i was able to get a good like six months out of the 2013 run i did as norfernum a lot of the what a name by the way right i think that was a dave lagana thing i remember uh taz taz ribbed about it and um 
<laughs> yeah, what a silly name. Uh, but then the management switching and stuff during my time there in the back and everything. I think Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett was was the producer of most of our stuff and was real behind the the nerd stuff. And then when he left, nobody was really gung ho about it anymore. Uh, we had a couple things go, and then we just stopped getting used. Hmm. So you look back on it n- not well because of I was going through my own shit in my life. Like I was physic, I was physically probably at my worst, which is odd. Stuff will fall into my lap at the worst like personal points in my life and that was one of them I was at like my skinniest I felt like shit I was in a bad relationship I was just doing a bunch I was just it was just bad uh, and then I get this I get this gig because they needed a person that uh, get this they needed a person is what I'm told that doesn't look like a wrestler and everybody that they would suggested looked too much like a wrestler and at the time I didn't look enough like a wrestler so they said perfect and I was like, they oh. didn't tell you this, did they? I found out later, but I was like, eh. so it's like, it is what it is. I kind of figured after seeing how EC3 looked, I was like, oh, I know what this is and how they told me to dress. I was like, I'm not an idiot. Yeah. I know what this is. You don't like, you don't have to say anything. I know I'm supposed to be just a fucking joke, schmuck, job, jobber kids, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to play it to the best of my abilities because wrestling's fun. Oh, and that's what you do. Yeah. Like, I feel like whatever you're given, you give your all to. Like, Hell yeah. Which is what we talked about at the start of this conversation. Thank you. I tried to give meat to a Norv Furnum character. Like, it wasn't supposed to have any meat and we ended up being there for a little bit. They made us nerds. They bought us They bought us clothes from Target to try to give us like a their idea of what a nerd looks like and they made us look like these tech guys. Uh, they started to film promos with us and the other people. There's this one that I they never used that I was so excited about. It was uh, Brooke Tessmacher was dressed as very Princess Leia, but they couldn't call her Princess Leia. But it was clearly a nod at Star Wars and us being nerds. And we were just supposed to be like, oh, like blown back by how beautiful she is. Just like, oh, and like, I, it was fun filming it. And, and, and she was a great sport of us having to just like stare at her, you know, at her and then make her like, oh, this is so dumb. But she was a great sport. We were, it was, it was a lot of fun and it never got used. Uh, we did a, a bit where just Taz comes out of the toilet just from taking a shit and he starts talking shit to us and I was like I was like hell yeah this is what wrestling's about I was uh, looking back and it's just like oh it's all stupid it's all fucking dumb of course Taz is gonna fucking bury us they're gonna take these two schmucks and they know they're not gonna say anything or do anything about it because they're these little boys and they should be lucky to be here and it's like so let's have Taz come out and l- figuratively allude that they are shitty because he flushed the fucking toilet mm. I love wrestling man I love it. <laughs> you ever sign Norv things when you're at conventions? I I I did. I I, I if I ever had to it's see been that, a while. if I ever had to see that fucking picture of me, we're like in my singlet doing this, and it's like a white background. I look awful again. It's like whatever. I'll sign it. I hate it, but I'll sign it. When was uh, the last time you signed one of those? Fairly recently. Yeah. Yeah. Because the last S- convention I saw you at was the LAX Fan Fest when we set this up, actually. A lot of people will have random stuff is when they are waiting at the airport or the hotel. You know what I mean? Those fans that come to find you there. Uh, they'll be like, hey, Peter, Peter. And I'll sign something that's like an old professional Peter Avalon from Arizona, 8x10. And they flip it over. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I do get excited, though, when they have me sign uh, Peter Avalon and Ray Rosa's PP Ray stuff that's not in California. Because I'm like, thank you for watching me and my... And my tag team. Those are all deep cuts. Yeah. Like, those are really deep cuts there, I feel like. Yeah. Like, if someone's digging that stuff up. That, that makes me feel good. And, and then I know they're real because I'll be like, what's your name? So I can kind of, like, address it to them. And they oh. have no, no qualms about it. So it's like, oh, they, they, they want to keep this. Oh. That they're not trying to eBay it, you know? Because there's a lot of people, I think, that found out about you when you debuted in AEW. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that don't watch wrestling beyond what's on television. Yes. And I've always tried to make myself that kind of wrestler that if they are yeah. watching me it could be a fan it, ideally they're not a wrestling fan i'm a i'm a fa- I'm, i make i make people into wrestling yeah. fans um, yeah so i think that's what we did always at bar wrestling me and ray it was always like uh, the dudes would bring their girlfriends or their friends and then you have this group of people there but there's one wrestling fan amongst the six of them you know but by the end of it there are six Peter Avalon, Ray Rosa's fans. You know what I mean? We, and then we sell five t-shirts to the dude's friend, but the wrestling fan didn't buy the shirt. <laughs> so it's weird how it works. You know? it, it's so interesting that there's a lot of gimmicks right now where maybe they're not meant for the people who are the hardcore wrestling fans. Yes. 
like the one you're just describing yes. or like Orange Cassidy wins over a lot of people. Like that video of him at Double or Nothing, the first Double or Nothing, giving the uh, the kicks to the, yes. you know, the deadly Orange Cassidy kicks, that has like 40 million views yeah. on AEW. I believe it's their, I believe, and I could be wrong, and I'm not fact checking this right now. I think it's their most watched video on the AEW I YouTube channel. I would channel. not be surprised. Because that's the type of thing that you can send to somebody and go, have you seen this? Yeah. Like the slow motion wrestling. Yes. Which was, I, that was done out here, wasn't it? There was some stuff that was done out here, and then there was done st stuff done in uh, Shikara, uh, back right. on the East Coast. Uh, but I, I'm not, I can't think of anything specific. Where do you sit on that, like, kind of taking the piss out of wrestling? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love all different kinds of wrestling. That's why I sometimes get bummed when a lot of wrestling isn't a variety, a variety act. Uh, I prefer my wrestling to be presented like the Muppets as opposed to uh, MMA UFC because then I will if you at least for me uh, I will if you uh, if you try to make it too much like a sport I will watch it like a sport that means I tune in at the main event mm. you know what I mean I'll have it on in the background yeah like to kind of listen to but then I'm talking to like my homies you know hey let's have a beer you know we're talking shit how's work and blah 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 and then you know once in a while we're like okay they're oh ooh, ooh, did you see that replay oh yeah but then most of the time we're just talking yeah whereas the Muppets I'm watching the whole damn thing because there's silly shit happening everything's kind of short bits and then it's uh, the idea of the Muppets is that it's the show within the show so it's like we get to see the show happening backstage and then we also get to see that the show that these characters intended to put on is what's happening in the ring and you still have to see that too you know so there's something happening all the fucking time so that's why it's like oh it's a lot to watch it's entertaining it's this but where it's sport there's only things happening in the ring i've never heard that analogy before but that might be the best analogy i've ever heard for pro wrestling yeah Wow, that it's like the Muppet Show. Yeah, well, it depends. Yeah, so it depends on how you like to watch. Some people I know will, don't like the Muppets. They don't like that. It's that cartoon bullshit. So of course they can't watch. You know, something that's presented that way. The WWF is going to be too cartoony for them. Mm. They have to watch. You know, New Japan or something that's presented more sport and serious. Nothing wrong with that. It's just how you know, different strokes, different folks. Well, each company has its own audience. I Absolutely. Think speaking to, and, and I, th I think that that's a huge misconception. Right. That not all of wrestling is for every single. Right fan find what you like and you can find what you like within those shows too yeah you can like this character or this match from this company yeah. and like this character or this match from this company yes and that's okay absolutely but, more but, wrestling the better but there's a lot of people that are like well i don't like wwe because i like this other company or i like AEW, which means i don't you know original pwg i think let me see. Probably maybe maybe 2005, six, seven. I see the poster I have on my wall is from 2007. I got yeah. into the business. This is May, the DDT four tournament. That's on my birthday. Wow. Yeah, right. May 19th. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They are there. Yeah. Show Two, that poster. After. DDT four 2007 was the very first DD, uh, tag tournament they had, and I was there, and I started training wrestling the the, the next month, and just. Uh, Damn, I forgot what I was getting at. What was that? What were, damn. We, <laughs> we were talking about liking one company, not liking oh, the yeah, other no, company. Oh, yeah. That version of PWG from that era, uh, probably like 2005 to 2010, 11, it was super variety. Like, they had these super matches, but then they also had funny, and then they had the locals, and then they had this, and then they had that. Like, everything was kind of different. Nothing was just a super show of straight tough matches. It was like you had the opening match was like a, maybe a zany six-man featuring some of the locals, and it was a different flavor of all the people, and it's like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. And the next match was maybe uh, something a little bit more um, more work rate, a little bit more serious. So it's, oh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, someone in from Japan, and he has a real more serious match, which was a little bit, and it's a little bit more longer and methodical and more grapply and serious as opposed to the crazy six men that we saw. And then the next match, oh, it, or, um, they didn't have very many of them, but it's like maybe a women's match, you know what I mean? And then uh, the next match is Lucha. And then the next match is Kiku Taro being funny. It's hilarious. It's silly. And then the next match, it's like a serious badass tag match with like the Briscoe brothers or something. And then intermission. And then we come back <laughs> and, and we have like a... a a, a zany tag with, which features a mixture of just everything because it has like the, the Los Luchas, Zocre and Phoenix start doing crazy shit over here and then the Rock Nest Monsters doing crazy shit over here and then you have uh, Ricochet doing some crazy shit over here and then someone being silly over here and then you have your PWG main event which would be like you're, you bring in whoever your stars in at the time. Here's your uh, Eddie Kingston a couple times they had him. Uh, Chris Hero, you know, and then he'll maybe wrestle 
what the the better local like a the the Scott Lost or he'll wrestle another fly in that you wouldn't expect to see him wrestle like a Davy Richards or El Generico or you know look like, I'll watch this show did you book the great show that's what I'm saying and yeah. then yeah they had like El Generico in a tag team with uh, Quicksilver who was a a local guy who was hot at the time and then you know Human Tornado was doing cool a great feud with Chris Hero with Candice LeRae kind of sprinkled in the middle and now she's showing glimpses of her being able to kick ass with the dudes yeah. and then they had Necro Butcher coming at the time to be in these crazy brawls uh, with, with guys you wouldn't expect. And they had Eddie Kingston, and then they had all the locals that everyone fell in love with. You had Scott Loss, Chris Bosch, Quicksilver, like I said. Uh, and then later on, you had other locals coming in, like myself, Ray Rosas, uh, the Rockness Monsters, uh, uh, Yuma, uh, Kevin Martinson, uh, Ryan, uh, Russ Taylor, uh, Willie Mack, and to be able to have us sprinkle in there with all these other guys, yeah, Brian yeah. Cage, and it was just, it was, it was a uh, I think the point, of what, the point of what I'm saying here is it's okay to like what you like. Yes. And it's also okay to not like what you don't totally. like. Totally. But it's not okay to not like someone or someone's opinion for what they don't like. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that like there's so much of it out there, especially now. There's I just mean, so yeah. much wrestling. Especially with a show like that, which is a mixture of That show everything. you just listed is yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. I brought friends to those shows and they were not wrestling fans and they didn't like every match. But I remember at the end of it, I would ask them, who did you like? Oh, oh man, Pac was amazing. He did those flips and the blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, and who did you like? Oh, man, Chris Bosch is a dickhead. He's punching dudes in the dick, but he's hilarious. You know what I mean? It was great to see who they liked and it was none of them knew who any of those dudes were until that yeah. day you know what advice would you have for someone who's an indie wrestler that wants to be remembered on a card like that for someone who might not be a wrestling fan watch the show and try to do something different mm. sometimes that works out sometimes it doesn't i've had it where i've like a comedian you know flat on my face no reception you're like oh <laughs> get that little lucy oh maybe i shouldn't have done that you know but then sometimes like oh I didn't expect that to work. Or, yeah. you know, you tried something accidentally and, oh, that worked, really? You know, like, yeah, so just don't be afraid. And Some of the best gimmicks come from these, like, try it one time, I don't even know what I'm doing. You'd be surprised at how much stuff is, like, successful that was, really? Okay, well, I guess that's my act now. Like, P.P. Eve- Ray weren't strippers at first. Someone just shoved a dollar bill down Ray Rosas' uh, trunks at one show, and then everybody in the front row followed suit. <laughs> Here we are making hundreds of dollars every dance. Are you? <laughs> we make a lot of money, bro. That's a, that's a brilliant gimmick bro, for making more money. Bro, at Prestige Wrestling, we walked away each with like 250 in our pockets of just extra cash. People were shoving 10s and 20s in our, in our pants. Wow. Yeah. I would never want that gimmick to go away. No, I'd never do. It keep, <laughs> motivates me to keep working out. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> what does your workout schedule look like? Uh, I try to be in the gym at least three to four times. I try to be in it every day, lift weights at least three, four times. Uh, just different cardio. I like to do the, I like to box the bag. Uh, I like to do the bike. Uh, I'll run around the neighborhood if it's not too hot. Uh, so I'm just constantly doing I like, there's a, F45 is a functional fitness gym. I'll sometimes 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 take classes there. Uh, there's MMA MMA gym around. Come to roll around. You uh, do some MMA. I've done a couple things with oh. uh, with with Josh Barnett at his at his spot. Don't get crazy. Just a couple things. <laughs> legit. I went two times there, and then just couple a couple little things here and there. Uh, but I'm trying to clear up time within my schedule that I could take something uh, more consistent on top of the workouts and stuff that I do already. So it's that on top of like your schedule is all over the place. It's all over the place. The AEW stuff with indie bookings, conventions, yeah. mm-hmm. you, you know. I just, uh, yesterday I just confirmed I'll be at uh, New Japan Strong uh, in August. So I'm excited there. Uh, wow. Then, yeah. So that'll be dope. And then we just got some, new, we have GCW this Friday. I don't know when this comes out. July 15. So this I, this will come out this week. All right. Yeah. So, so Friday. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun. So it'll be nice that every, uh, for everybody to see how much money me and Ray will make <laughs> dancing in L.A. You ever had a death match? Ray's had two of them. I've had none. But I've Would had. You? That goes through my mind a lot. I mean, when you start dipping your toe in the GCW water. Man, I think it would be had to be. A lot of money behind it because to see <laughs> to want to see Pretty Peter in a death match. It's hopefully there's a big paycheck behind that one. You know, I had David Arquette on the show, and that, that's my student. He said so many great things about you. Awesome. And I don't know if everybody realizes this. Like he learned how to wrestle 
because of you. Yeah. How did that even come together? I was the head trainer at the United Wrestling Wrestle Center, uh, which was in Oxnard. So that's about an hour, hour and a half from here. Uh, when the championship wrestling show was filmed out there every month. And uh, I was I was recommended uh, to to David and then I got a phone call. I was actually, I think I had a private class or I had a private that day so I didn't answer the phone. So after I was done, the guy had left. I was like, I checked my phone. I had a voicemail from from David Arquette and I thought it was a rib at first. I was like, I was like yeah, right. You know, uh, then I called him up and it's him. So we set, scheduled the time for him to come down to the Russell Center in Oxnard. He came down, I think, um, two, three times. Very first time I made him puke, man. I made his ass puke. I wasn't trying to, just... You know, it's rough, and it was hot. Uh, probably came two or th- uh, second or Where third. Where did he puke from? Like just drills, <sighs> rolls. Mm. It's hot in that. It was hot in my school, and then teaching him rolls, it makes you dizzy, especially if you're not used to it. Um, and then he came two or th- two or three more times, and then he bought a ring and set it up in his backyard, uh, which was near. I lived in Sherman Oaks, and. He lived nearby, and I would go to his house and train him in his backyard. And this was every like the week. thing of like wrestling lore of like, wait a sec, David Arquette has a ring in his backyard. Yeah. And then I would hear stories of like Jungle Boy would just be like hanging out there, yeah. and John Morrison. I think yeah. that was John Morrison's ring, wasn't it? it no, it was. John Morrison had a ring in his backyard. I, if it's the ring I'm thinking of, I think the ring that Morrison had was moved to another gentleman's house that was a stunt man and he has since sold it. That's right. Yeah. Um, so Arquette bought like a brand new he ring? Had a, he bought a brand new ring uh, and I think Jungle Boy now has that ring. This is true. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. So you were tra- You were doing all the training with Arquette yes. at his house, in his backyard. At his, at his backyard, yeah. That's pretty amazing. It was awesome. He had a beautiful backyard. It was fun when his, his sons would come out and, and watch uh, uh, Charlie, the oldest... He he loved the ring. He was like, "Oh, this is great." He's like, he's seen the bouncing and the noisy, the noises, and he wanted to get in and, and fight us. He wanted to play, and they would have to tell him like, "All right, buddy, you gotta get out." And he just wanted to play. But then Gus, his youngest, man, poor little guy, everything scared him, like the noises, and he's just like, "Ah, oh, oh, and I was like, "No, Gus." <laughs> <laughs> uh, you trained a former WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, that's amazing. It was awesome. It must have been pretty cool to see what he ended up doing in wrestling. It was too. great because we were filming. He wanted to do his uh, his uh, his documentary. Yeah, so which that's is a, his wonderful, documentary. Wonderful documentary. Is, yeah. So good. So it's great that I was able to be a part of his story t- of redemption, but also a part of the story of of saving his life. Because like before he started training and getting into getting healthy, the wrestling was a part of his help getting in healthy it was a part of it just a part of what he had started to do but he had like a heart attack not too yeah. soon before that so it's like getting fit and all the stuff he was doing wrestling was a part of that and it helped save his life so it's like if i could be it was just a little part of that then that's wonderful that we saved his life you know he's there with his wife his children and you know the thing that amazes me so much about his story and it's so inspirational is he had the dream that he wanted to be a pro wrestler. Yeah. He wanted to make good on everything that happened in WCW. Yeah. He started training in his 40s yeah. after having a heart yeah. attack. Like I, I listen to that and go, we should have no excuses for anything. No, and it's like, why? at the same time, I wanted to be like, after all that, I was like, why do you give a shit about any of these dudes' respect? Yeah. You, just, you, fought, you fought death in one, bro. Yeah. Like, what do you give a shit about some dude on, the, on a couch? Like, yeah. was, do you want his respect? But be power to you, man. And he has earned it. Hell yeah. That, and that's the amazing thing about it. The death match. He hit me up the week before, two weeks before, asking, "Hey, can we get together for training? I have a hardcore match coming up." And I couldn't make it work. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't make it work with my schedule. I think I was traveling, whatever I was doing. And then I see that what the match ended up being, and I was like, "David, that is not a hardcore match." Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was like, "David, you know you're not supposed to die." In yeah. A death match. You should have told me it was a death match. Like, I could prep you for hardcore. Yeah, you mean, you go through a table if you want. If you have to take a chair, I guess, protect yourself. Like, you know, but like a glass and fire, bro, I'm here on your own. Yeah. yeah. Well, then maybe you don't want to do a match. Like, you comes back to that. Man, yeah, my poor face. Yeah, it's too pretty. <laughs> it's too pretty, pretty Peter Avalon. Yeah, I agree. I've really enjoyed this. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you for letting me come by. This is great. Meet your rabbit, who's somewhere over here. He's in the box, I think. Playing, he's playing. Oh, oh yeah, look at oh, that. There he is. Your rabbit just, where does your rabbit sleep at night? 
Uh, he actually, I think, sleeps late afternoon, so he just lays out on the carpet. So it's like funny when I walk. The rabbit out. doesn't come in the bed like a dog. No, I keep uh, I keep my my st- my stuff my stuff separate. Okay, it's more, mostly because I have I can't pick up the wires and stuff in my room off the ground. So I'm just just stay out, bro. I don't want you to eat this stuff. <laughs> I end every conversation talking about gratitude because it's such an important thing to me. I start and end every day saying out loud three things I'm grateful for. So what are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? My, my current career, my future career prospects, and my bunny Ed Brown. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you.